the oxidation state of hydrogen atom in MGH2 is most close to what? All right, so in this particular problem, we are asked to determine the oxidation state of the hydrogen atom in magnesium hydride. So we have the um, molecular formula for magnesium hydride there stated for us. So let's go ahead and sketch out our roadmap to this particular problem. Again, we will determine if the substance is elemental. If it's elemental, we stop there. However, if not, we move on to step two where we determine if the substance has a charge. Step three would be to identify the elements that have a specific rule using those rules we defined previously. And then finally, step four would be to use those general rules to define the oxidation state for each element. So let's go ahead and start with step number one in determining if the substance is elemental. So there's our molecular formula for magnesium hydride. Obviously, it is not elemental. We are dealing with both magnesium and hydrogen in this particular case. So we will move on to step number two, determine if the substance has a charge. We can look at the molecular formula and see that there is no charge present on this particular molecular compound. It is not a polyatomic ion. So we will move on to step number three to identify the elements that have a specific rule. So if we hop back to our general rules that we laid out earlier on our periodic table, again, these rules are not provided to us in the NCES reference handbook. However, they are very simple to memorize, especially through repetition. And that's what we'll be doing in this session. So those are our general rules. We have magnesium and we have hydrogen so i highlighted both of those elements as well as both general rules that apply to them so we have our two general rules for the particular element but we also have to remember that the sum of the oxidation numbers within this molecule will be neutral so the oxidation numbers will add up to zero again that is huge you're not getting the oxidation number of an unknown element at any point without knowing if it has a charge or if it's going to be neutral so let's go ahead and pull these general rules back over to our problem statement and we can move on to step number four where we will use these general rules to define the oxidation state for each element now as i always like to do i like to use a table while i present just to keep things clear for y'all so you understand how I'm making my way through this particular problem. However, uh, not recommended to use a table. Don't be this organized on the exam. You're going to be able to perform much faster, obviously, just by scratching this out. But for preparation purposes, I want to make sure that you guys are fully seeing the work I am doing and the flow of the work so that you, that you can move away from my teachings and be able to implement these steps on your own. So again, we will use tables in every single problem we work today, only as a purpose of illustrating, organizing, helping you guys kind of just develop those connections and understanding the flow and the process of finding the oxidation state or the oxidation number. All right, so we start at the bottom. Our elements are magnesium, we have hydrogen. All right, so we laid those out in our table. Now the base oxidation number for magnesium is plus two because that's a group two metal. And we know that group two metals, our rule of thumb is they are always plus two. All right, we know we have one of those elements in our molecular formula. And we know we have um, a total oxidation number of plus two. So if there's a single element and the base oxidation number is plus two, then that means the total oxidation number of the magnesium atom or element within this compound will be plus two as well. Now we know that the sum of the oxidation numbers is zero. So if the sum of the oxidation numbers is zero, then we're gonna go ahead and put that as our charge. Whatever the total oxidation number is for our hydrogen element, that must sum to zero. So just quick math in our head must mean that the total oxidation number of hydrogen must be negative two. However, this is not the correct answer. You see it as a answer option, definitely. Many of you may really quickly see that and observe that in our answer options and click that, which it would be wrong. I don't want you to do that. 
we have to reverse our way back down this table to determine what the base oxidation number is. And that is going to be driven by the number of elements within our molecular formula. So for hydrogen, we have two. We have two hydrogen atoms. We see that in our molecular formula. And if we have two hydrogen atoms and our total oxidation number is negative two, that must mean our base oxidation number is negative one. Therefore, the correct answer is the oxidation state of hydrogen atom is negative one. Now, real quick, if we looked at our general rules, if we knew these rules down pat, we had it memorized, we would see that hydrogen is going to be negative one when it's paired with a metal. So it's paired with magnesium in this particular instance, which means it's going to be the base oxidation number of that element is going to be negative one. But we went through all the work, which is not a big deal. That work actually would take you a few seconds to do. Uh, but that is the flow of the steps.